Hello everyone, welcome to Friday's Hope. Hope for Friday and beyond. I'm Sue Barnhart, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and an ordained minister through the Worship Center Ministries. So I was sharing a tidbit of what we we're going to talk about tonight, and I asked a question. I asked, are you better? Are you getting better? Are you feeling stronger? Are you seeing more good things in life? Do you feel better about life physically, mentally, spiritually? If you were to look back on your life last month, last week, last year, would you say you're better? It's an important question to ask. Now I know there are some people tuning in that may have had just had a very difficult um, situation happen or may have just happened in the last few days even with that I want you to know if you're going through those things I want to know if you're going through them better I had a day like that today it's it's just a small thing but I had a day it's my part of my day off from my one job and I woke up about 6 a.m. and said Yep, I don't want to do today. I do not want to do today. Nope, don't want to do it. Sat up. I'm still in bed while I'm saying this. So I sat up, scrolled through my phone for a minute, looked out my window and said, God, help me. I just don't want to do today. I don't want to take care of anything. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to get dressed. I don't want to do today. And, by the way, it's cold, rainy, dreary day today where I'm at. So there's several reasons that this was a better way for me to handle this. And I'll share them with you. First, I asked God to help me. I didn't just power through or push through. I simply asked God to help me. I didn't give him a list of things I needed to do. Also, I didn't lay back down. I didn't make phone calls to tell people I wasn't coming. Nope, I wasn't coming. I just got up and started to do a few things at a time, and that's key. That's one thing to take care of, just one thing at a time. It may not be huge to you, but sometimes that one small thing helps you to go on to other things. One of the first things I did that I had to do is go to my exercise class. Now, you all know how much you feel like exercising when you're feeling down not at least I don't so I went ahead and threw on my sweats and walked out the door I didn't think about it I didn't overthink I didn't think about oh you'll feel so much better if you do or oh what would happen if I didn't go to class if I skipped I could have picked up the phone and said nope I'm not coming and I didn't overthink about class I could have gone back and forth all morning long just said, nope, I don't want to go. I just didn't want to go. And I walked out the door, started my car, and drove to my exercise class. As soon as I got there and started greeting people and started doing the exercises, of course I felt better. But that wasn't the only reason I felt better. I got out of that funk. I started seeing other people. And of course the movement but most of all because I asked God to help me I didn't pick up my apartment I didn't clean I didn't do anything except run a brush through my hair brush my teeth and walk out the door in my sweats that's all I did sometimes our own mental debate and overthinking causes us to start to go downhill in our mental, physical, and spiritual health. We can sit there and debate back and forth for a really long time about a situation that's very minor in detail. 
can't we? I can anyway. I don't know about you all. Maybe you don't overthink, but oh, I do. Oh my goodness, I do. It's often awful the way I overthink. But I didn't. I just walked out the door. One of the most things, one of the most important things I think we have to do is keep track of the things that make us feel better and the things that hold us back. Then we've realized the things that help us, we can repeat that process to keep us healthy and keep getting better and better. I knew the exercise class would help, but I also knew my own mental state that I would overthink and start thinking about a million things. I just did. I just did what I knew would make me feel better. It's important to keep track when you find something that starts to make you feel better. Keep track of that and keep doing it. It's important. Proverbs 4, chapter 4, verses 7, 5 through 7 in the New Living Translation says, Get wisdom. Develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. Don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her, she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. I think wisdom and developing good judgment means that you take note of what's working for us to keep us mentally healthy. What works for us may not work for everybody, and what works for others may not work for us. Know and learn the difference. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of information and advice. Find out what works for you and find the people who are positive, who are going to encourage you, not the Debbie Downers who are always sure, oh, that's not going to work, or that won't work, or oh, I've heard horrible things about that. No. Go to the wise people who will help you and encourage you to go down the right path. Then practice those things that work for you. That's good judgment. You know, if, if you're trying to break a, an addiction or a weight loss or whatever, good judgment, I mean, your own self says, yeah, go have that drink or, or smoke that weed or, or uh, go out with your friends all night and drink or whatever. Go grab that chocolate cupcake. No. Good judgment says I can do all those things and I love to do all those things, but guess what? That's not going to help me. If I truly want to be healthy and whole, I need to do what I know is going to make me feel better. Hence my exercise class this morning. Learn the difference and practice it. Practice those things that work for you. That's wisdom and judgment. Another important thing I think we should do is stay, to stay mentally and physically and spiritually healthy is let God do his work in our lives. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 21 through 23, also in the New Living Translation says, Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off all your sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Look, I'm not talking or saying that we're all sinners or we're all a mess, but what I am saying is that that sinful na nature, going out and doing those things that are not making us any healthy or mentally, are the things we need to throw off because they're the things that are destroying us. And I think it's not good, and I even would say it's a sin to do things that destroy us, to destroy the body that God gave us. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. What are the things that cause us the problems in our lives? Get rid of them. What I'm saying is some of those things that we've gotten ourselves into, the way we've handled life in difficult times, have tried to destroy us mentally, emotionally, physically. Get rid of them. Figure out how to do that. 
and then throw off the old thoughts, the old nature, the old way of life, and let the spirit do the work in us by renewing our minds. Learn the truth that comes from Jesus and let the spirit work in our minds. Memorize scripture, listen to praise and worship music. What are you hearing and listening to? What are you pouring into your mind? What are you pouring into your thoughts? That makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. Renew our minds through the spirit. Then I went and looked up the word better in the Bible. My goodness, there's a lot of scriptures on the word better. And here are just a few verses or a couple of verses that came up. Psalm 63, verse 3. Because your loving kindness, meaning God's loving kindness, is better than life, my lips, my lips shall praise you. See, when we remember that God's loving kindness is immense, deep, forever, intimate, and amazing, it helps us walk through those days, even during difficult situations. God, I know you love me so much. It hurts so bad. God, I have no idea what I'm going to do, how I'm going to walk forward, but I know your love is there and you're going to help me walk through. Whether you're living with them every day or it just happen, difficult situations are there and he's going to help you walk through them. His love is better than life because of his love, he will help you get through life. Let me say that again. His love is better than life and because of his love, he will help you get through life. My day was, was padded, if you will, by knowing he loves me. It's an inner knowing that helps me just to move through the day and not be concerned that I was in a funk and I asked God to help me while I was still in that funk. He doesn't want you to get all cleaned up and, and just right. That can never happen. Right where you are, right where you're standing, right what you're doing, this second, just ask God to help you. And then let him. Don't try and take it over. Don't try and, oh, well, I'm sure this, that, and the other thing. Let him help. His timing and his plan is so much different than our infinite, than our mortal little time and plans. He's infinite. He's all-knowing. He knows how we need it, what we need, and when we need, and he will help us walk through. Trust him. Trust in the Lord. Psalm 118, 8 through 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man, even your own self. You know, we can steer ourselves wrong. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. When I read that passage, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So many times we go to people and put our confidence in one or two people, that spouse, that, that, that special someone, that whoever. No, our confidence belongs in God. We, when we have difficult situations, we have to make a decision. We have to, we really should start to just ask God what we should do. What we should do. And then gas godly men and women for counsel as well. And then follow those things that God showed you. It, and again, put your confidence in what God's showing you. And the men and women of God should back you up, back up what you've already heard from God or read through his word, even without you ever sharing anything. The best thing people can do for you is pray for you, support you, encourage you, strengthen you. Follow the suggestions. Follow God's word. Follow what he wants you to do. You know he wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be strong. Even in your situation right now, he is our strength. He wants you to walk in strength, wholeness, and healing. 
God doesn't need to, to need to write in the sky or talk to you directly to give you sound advice. He uses godly men and women and his word to direct you. But it's got to be in union with his word. Then the second half of that verse says, trust in the Lord is better than to trust and put your confidence in princes. Princes. I'm going to say this, not political on any level, but please don't put your trust in the government. They're always going to make mistakes. They don't have the ability to take care of all you or what you need. They just don't. They're men and women, fallible men and women. They do the very best they can. They try the very best they can, but God will always come through. 7,000 promises, over 7,000 promises that he says yes and amen to. Put your confidence in God. He's going to help you walk through the things and you can trust him to take care of you. You can put your confidence in him. He's there and he's gonna get you through every single time have to sit there and look different than what you've looked before okay he's going to get you through feeling like um see you as one way and you don't want to mess that up so you want to make sure you always look like the strong person but you can't because you're in a situation okay let god help you get you through All I'm saying is you're going to get so much farther and better when we put our trust in God. I know it's difficult to put your trust or your faith in God because I'm sure your trust has been violated by people here on earth. He's not a people and he doesn't live here on earth. He is an all perfect God that loves you and wants to see you whole, healed and delivered. Whether that may whatever that may look like for you you could go through tragic difficult situations you may live daily in a catastrophic disease or situation difficult family work or life in general here on earth it's no picnic here on earth the god is still god and you can put your trust in him to help you through your day by day struggles or your major struggles he loves you and he's just waiting for you to call on him he loves you he's stronger than any cir circumstance or situation that you might go through and he wants to help you it's not like okay fine i'll go help her again i'll go help him again or oh look what they got themselves into fine i'll just go down there no he can't wait to help you. He loves you that much. He wants to see you walking strong and tall. If there's resources out there for you to become that strong person, then grab a hold of those resources. Don't keep sitting in that mess. And finally, if you feel like you want to hurt yourself or others, or if you feel like you are stuck in a bad place, please, please, please call out to God. He says he will restore us and help us. Psalm 121 verse one and two says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Reach out to God and then reach out to people. God uses people to help. Reach out to people who are well, what do I want to say? Who, I'm not sure what I want to say, but reach out to, to people who have the knowledge that needs to be given to help you grow and move out of your situation. We can reach out to a lot of people, but not everybody can help us during that situation or that circumstance. They may be amazing friends. Praise God for my friends. But right now, maybe they wouldn't have been able to help me. 
I needed to get out of my apartment, out of my home, and I needed to get, be around other people, and I needed to exercise. That's how I got help this morning. Reach out to people that God will use to help you. If you're in a very difficult, dangerous place, call the police, call the, the hospital, call the Y. They have a suicide hotline. Call your pastor, the mental health clinic. Call your doctor or your psychiatrist. Yes, you're correct, Tina. Thanks God for good friends. Call the suicide hotline. There are so many places God has given us to get help. All you have to do is reach out. And I know reaching out is hard, but you're worth the risk of reaching out to get the help. I want to encourage you, don't sit there day after day in that mire of a mess. Reach out. Keep reaching out until you find the people that will help you move forward, that are a good fit for you. Just because one place doesn't work or one person doesn't work doesn't mean that it's hopeless. There are people out there just for you that God has designed and given to you to help you become whole, healed, and delivered. I know two people right now that are seeing a therapist and they had to go through a couple of them before they found the one that would help that fit. And now they tell me that these people are wonderful, they're amazing, and they're helping them so much. So keep working on it. Keep looking for the um, person that will help you. God's designed it for you to become whole, healed, and delivered. You do desire, deserve to walk that way here on earth. Don't sin any longer in that mess. Do what it takes to live an amazing life with Jesus, through Jesus, by Jesus. Reach out to God. Reach out to people who will help you become healed and walk strong. The best strong and the best heal that you can. If you feel this video has helped you or someone else, please would you share it? Let us know if and how we've helped. Our email is fridayshope3 at gmail.com or you can comment on this video. You can watch this and other videos on our YouTube channel, Friday's Hope. The link is at the top of this Facebook page, by the way. Most of all, would you please pray for this ministry? Pray for me and this ministry? Thank you. I pray, God, thank you, Tina, for sharing. Thank you for your prayers and for listening. I pray God richly blesses and heals your hurting body, soul, and mind, gives you the ability to walk strong in whatever you're going through. I know he can do it because he's done it for me. I love you so much, and I'm praying for you. See you next week at 5 here on Friday's Hope. God bless you.